Hello friends, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to look at HTTP endpoints, which is uh, one of the endpoint types offered by WSO2 Enterprise Integrator. So what is HTTP endpoints and how is it different from the address endpoints uh, that we discussed in the previous video? So address endpoints were like mostly in static in nature. You have a static endpoint and then you just configure that endpoint as an address endpoint and then you keep hitting that specific endpoint. Whereas in reality, you may come across situations where you have to form the URL dynamically during runtime. So to give you an example, um, if you have a backend endpoint that gives you uh, the exchange rate, right? So every time you invoke that uh, particular API, the parameters that you pass to that API might be different because maybe the first time you want to get the exchange rate between the US dollars and uh, Indian rupee. Maybe then another time you want to get it between US dollars and uh, euros, uh, which means the parameters that you pass to that URI uh, will be different. So in that case, when you invoke it, you have to form the URL dynamically. So HTTP endpoints are exactly meant uh, to achieve these kind of scenarios. I'll explain you how to get it done in WSO2. Let's get started. So as usual, I'm going to start it with name and multimodal project. I'm right clicking on the project explorer, clicking on new, go to other and select Maven multimodal project. I have to give a name for the project. I'm following the usual convention. So I'm going to name it as sample six. Click on finish to create your Maven multimodal project. Now you have the project. Next step is to create an ESB config project to define your APIs. Uh, click on new and then ESB config project. Click on next and then name the project as sample6 underscore ESB. Click next and link the project to the Maven parent project. So that's sample6. So check the specified parent from workspace option and uh, select sample6. Click on finish to finish the ESB config project. Now, as you can see, the default uh, folder structure is created by uh, WSO2 as, as you can see here. And now our focus is on API and uh, in today's video, I'll be invoking a backend endpoint, which is actually a currency exchange uh, endpoint. So we'll dynamically pass uh, the values in the URL and we'll extract that from the resource param from the URL and then uh, we'll pass it as query params to the backend. So click on, click on the API, click on new and click on rest API to create your new API. I'm going to name it as sample sample six API and then I'm going to use the same as the name of my context. Click on finish. Now your API uh, is going to get created. It's going to take another uh, few seconds to complete your API. Now, as you can see, the structure of API is created. Now we'll go ahead and add more uh, mediators into it. In this particular video, I'll be passing at the from and to currencies in the URL as a resource parameter and in the API we'll extract it. So first step is to extract that resource parameters that I'm going to send in the URL. HTTP, let's say local host, then it's going to be sample six API slash. And then if I'm going to get the currency exchange from USD to Indian rupee, I'll be this this is how my URL will look like, right? Let's go back to uh, the integration studio. So first step I'll be doing is to extract the resource parameters. Yeah, I'm defining a property. I'm defining a property with the name URI dot where dot from CURR. So this stands for from currency. So uh, when we use HTTP endpoints, and if you want to substitute a variable, then the variable should have this form. That's why I'm defining a property within, with the, the name format uri.var. Uh, from currency. So, and this is going to be an expression and uh, it's of uh, type string. And then it's not a hard coded value, it's going to be an expression. So I'm selecting the expression tab and then I'm clicking on the expression to extract a resource parameter we can make use of the get property a method 
this this is going to be the name of uh, my resource parameter I'll, I'll show you how to define that I'm just copying this okay I'm dragging another property here and this is to extract the value of the two currency so I'm gonna name it as URI dot dot where dot to CURR and uh, this is also going to be of type string and the value is going to be an expression and I'm setting the expression value here select expressions and then I'm pasting the value that I copied from the previous one that's going to be two currency okay now I've done what is required to extract these two values you have to make a small modification on the resource uh, side click on the resource and then you can see the properties of the API resource here. The URL style is none by default. So I'm changing it to a URL template and then I'm defining a template here, right? Slash and then here I'll define that's going to be from currency and then slash to currency. This is actually to um, define our URL uh, just like I, I showed here like our, our URL is going to be of this format so sample 6 API is going to be the context and then this this part of USD slash INR or rather the from currency and to currency this is what I'm defining here by making use of the URL template right here the protocol I'll, I'll leave to on the HTTP and then it's going to be a get method so that configuration is completed I'm just saving it so this is the URL that uh, we are going to hit and to invoke uh, this particular endpoint you will have to get an API key this won't work so I have registered an alpha vantage to get an API key and so you will also have to use um, or rather you'll have to register to get an API key so uh, there are four parameters to be passed in a query params two of them are uh, kind of hardcoded values the function which is a static value currency exchange and the API key Next, I'm going to use a call mediator. And now to the call mediator, I have to drag an endpoint. Um, there are actually two methods to define an endpoint. Uh, you can go here and then right click in new and endpoint. And then from here, you can create an endpoint. And this can be, if you follow this method, then the endpoint that you created can be reused. However, for this particular video, I'm following other approach wherein I'm just directly going to drag an HTTP endpoint from the HTTP endpoints tab. So I'm dragging the HTTP endpoint here. Okay, now it's time to configure that. Here we have to give the URL uh, along with the, um, the variable name. So I'm just copying the whole uh, URL from here. I'm putting it here. Now function is going to be currency exchange at static value. So I'm not going to change it. And then this from currency is going to change right so this one i'll replace with what we have defined in this property here so this is going to be uri dot where dot from urr the same uh, the same modification need to be done for two currency as well so i'm changing it to uri dot where dot to CURR to currency and the API is good API key is going to be static so you will have to get a value for this I'm going to put my value and then just close it off so I've copied my API key value there the call mediator setup is completed next is to send the response back to uh, the consumer we have to configure a response mediator so I'm just adding a response mediator here and this completes our API I'll just explain the API again once you get the request, the first step is to extract um, the two values from and two currency values from the resource parameter. I'm making use of property mediator here and um, the property name should have this uh, particular format uri.var.format because whenever you use an HTTP endpoint and if you want to replace uh, values, then the, the, the property names should have this format, right? So after extracting uh, these two variables from the resource parameter, then I'm making a call and uh, using an HTTP endpoint and dynamically constructing that endpoint. So as you can see here, the from currency and to currency values, I'm replacing with the properties that I've saved previously. 
Next step is a response and then just sending the response back. So I'm saving the API. Next step is to create a composite application project to package our API. So I'm clicking on sample six project, click on other and then search for composite application. So that's my composite application project. I'm going to name this as sample six underscore car and I'm selecting the sample six ESB project. Click on next and then link the car file to the parent project at sample six. Click on finish. Now the car file is completed. Now I'm going to deploy this. As you can see here, I have a local instance, but at the moment it is stopped. So I'm going to start it. Right click and start. As you can see, the local instance has started now. I'm going to deploy the new car file that I just created. So click on sample six car file, click on add and finish. It's getting deployed. Um, as you can see here, the car file is successfully deployed. Now I'm moving to the admin console. I'm at the admin console now. I'm logging in using the default credentials. Click on the APIs section to see the new newly deployed API. There is another page, sorry. So sample six was the API that we just deployed. I'm just taking the URL, opening a new tab, pasting the URL there. Now um, to test it, I'm, I'm going to use USD and INR conversion rate. So USD slash INR. As you can see, uh, we got the response back. Uh, so this is a conversion rate. So if you want to change it to, let's say I'm going to put it as AED and then, so now we are dynamically constructing the URLs and then, so we are getting the corresponding, uh, you know, conversion rates. So that's all about HTTP endpoints. I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed this video and then understood how to configure the HTTP endpoints using WSO2's Enterprise Integrator. Thank you so much for watching this video. Happy learning and have a wonderful day.